Welcome back guys, it's Steve from Featherlight and I hope this video finds you healthy and happy and creative. So many things have changed and you guys have done such an amazing job making it this far. This has been quite a tutorial journey and every one of you should be proud of yourselves. We're gonna take all of that hard work you've done so far, all the stuff we've learned about audio production and MIDI and automation and mix architecture and vocal chains and bus compression and all those things. And now it's time to get all of that stuff out into the real world. And we're gonna use Cubase's export feature to accomplish that. It's powerful, it's easy, and it allows you to do a lot of things at one time. You can do things like export MP3s directly, we can export WAV files, we can even export stems for other people to work on. So let's dive in and look a little closer at Cubase's amazing and super powerful export audio feature. All right, we're back on our desktop and we're working on a song from a killer Northwest artist called Bob Hefferman. It's a blues project and it sounds like this. Just some great guitar work from another Northwest artist, Dennis Morris, guitar player for a band called Redbone. You might have heard one of their songs, Come and Get Your Love, from the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack last summer. And one point of clarification, to mix down through our two bus effects chain or not, that one subject could fill volumes, but we're gonna be using our mixed bus compressor on our two bus, as well as a post limiter, because we want that glue as we prepare to make our export master. And to do that, we're gonna use Cubase's export audio feature. We're gonna to go to file and navigate down to export and choose audio mix down. And this is gonna open up the audio mix down dialog window. When we first open up the dialog box, we're confronted with a bunch of different options, but basically we can run it in single mode or we can run it in multiple mode. So a single just simply means we're gonna be exporting one thing. In this case, it could be the stereo outputs. That would be the main mix. That's the sum of everything in the project, or we could export just the drum bus or the guitar bus or individual tracks by themselves. So we'll get into more of that in a second here by using multiple mode. But for the time being, we're gonna export in single mode. We can give it a title here. We can choose a destination path that our mix is gonna end up in. Conflict simply means when you export multiple audio files, you might have name duplications. This asks you how you want to resolve that. And then we have presets. If we've created presets with our entire dialog box, we can save and load them here. We can choose which of these types to save our file as. WAV file, MP3, FLAC, and all these other options here. Directly under that is our sample rate. And this allows us to export at either the project rate or we can choose a completely different one altogether. And directly under that is our bit depth. This is gonna be the bit depth of the file, the stereo file that we export, or if we're in multiple mode, the bit depth of those files that we export. This is important here for a second, and the reason why is because of what we're gonna do with it after the fact. In this particular instance, we're gonna be exporting a wave with the sole purpose of mastering it later, which means we need the most amount of editing headroom and fidelity that we can achieve when we're mastering this file. So we want this to stay at 32-bit floating. We could even choose 64-bit floating if our computer processor setup allows that, although that would be crazy overkill for what we're doing here. For the time being, 32-bit floating will work great. Directly under that is gonna be our export as feature, which simply means are we gonna export it as a standard stereo file, which is interleaved, or are we gonna split the channels into two separate files, a left and a right, or are we gonna mono down mix? And we can even down mix our surround sound files from here as well if we have them. And to the right of that, we have a couple of options that control how metadata is embedded into our audio file. But if we choose anything other than the default, which is the insert IXML chunk, your streaming service or your audio application may or may not support these features. So for example, if you choose to disable the RF64 compliant file format, which allows your file to be larger than four gig, or you insert tempo definition information, all those things may or may not be understood correctly. So it's always best to check with your streaming services and your audio applications for full compliance. 
The next area in our dialog box is the export range. We've got two different choices here. We have locator and we have cycle markers. In locator mode, that simply means that it's gonna export whatever is in the middle of your two left and right marker settings. So that's generally the entire song. If you have a marker track inside your song, and we'll add one here really quickly, and then we'll go up and move it to the top so we can see it, and then we'll define a couple of cycle marker areas. So for example, if we wanted to define maybe the first verse, we'll create a loop section, and then we'll drag our left and right cycle marker handles to define, let's say, just the first verse, and then we'll create another one here, and we'll make that one define just the solo section of the song. So we'll drag our left and right cycle marker handles to include just the solo section. And now we can see in the export range box under the cycle marker areas that those two regions are now selectable. So if we wanted to export just the first verse, for example, or just the solo section, we could do those as their own individual jobs. And lastly, it'll ask us what we wanna do when we're done exporting the file. We can open it up into additional applications or we can insert it into the pool. And these checkboxes allow us to change the condition of the export, for example, make it real time. So since we're still in single mode, we're simply gonna confirm that our master stereo channel box is selected up in the output channels, and we're gonna hit the add to queue button. And this is simply gonna add the this job with those selections to our export queue. This is where things start to get really cool. So we already have one job in our queue, only now we're gonna to start to add new jobs. So we're gonna leave all the settings exactly the same. We're gonna come down here and instead of choosing WAVE, we're gonna choose MPEG-1 layer three. This will create an MP3 file, just like the WAVE file job, except this can have all of its own settings. From here, we can make high quality MP3 mix downs and we can determine the bit rate that they're encoded at. In addition, we can insert ID3 information here. So this allows us to edit that information. We can open this up and choose the title itself and the artist, the track number, the year, the genre. It's give us a bunch of different options that we can choose from here. And we can even have a comment section. And all of that is gonna be included in the MP3 metadata that's gonna go with the actual audio file. Once all of our choices for our MP3 mix down are made, we simply come down to the add to queue button, hit that, and that job has been added to our job queue. So now it's time for us to add even more stuff for it to do. So let's say someone either wants to collaborate on the project or wants to do a remix and they want us to send them stems. So stems are basically complete mix downs of the individual subgroups in the project by themselves. So over here to the right of our project, you can see we have all of our subgroups. We've got drums, guitar, keys, vocals, backing vocals, and even effects groups, as well as a bass group. And we need to make individual recordings of each one of these subgroups by themselves with no other instruments or any other groups included. So we're gonna come up here to our window, only this time we're gonna choose multiple mode and we're gonna deselect our stereo main outs. And this time we're gonna come down to our category that includes each one of our subgroups. So we've got guitars up here, electric guitars. We've got all these different subgroups up here, keys, vocals, backing vocals. We've included our acoustic and our electric guitar subgroups, our solo subgroups. And we could even include the effects send groups as well if we wanted the effects buses to be included in our mix down. Now in multiple mode, when we go over to the naming convention box here and we give it a title, we'll see that when we choose that, our preview window is giving us an example of what that file structure name is gonna look like when it exports those files. It's gonna say grace mix five slash base for that particular selected subgroup because that's the last one we chose here. This is pretty cool because it means that we have some control over what the finished subgroup stereo wave file mix downs are gonna be titled, which means we don't have to pick through them like a pile of laundry to find out what's what. If we left the file type in MP3 like the last job, it would simply make MP3 mix downs of all of our buses. So we're gonna change this back to WAV file because we need our mix downs of our individual subgroups to be as high quality as we can get them. We wanna give our mix engineer as much headroom and the highest quality files as we can. Because we're mixing down in multiple mode and we're mixing down entire groups of channels into subgroups, we have some control over how much of the signal path is gonna be included in that mix down. The first choice includes all of our insert effects and our channel strip, but none of the downstream processing or their effects sends. The second choice is a dry submix that totally disables all of our insert and channel strip choices and also it's pre-fader and panner. The third choice is a post-fader and panner mix down that includes all of our inserts and channel strip, but also the sends that might go to effects. So if we have one of our groups, for example, the vocal group here that has a send that goes to some of our effects send buses, 
it's going to include those effects in the mix down. And the final choice here just includes the entire signal chain, including all the insert effects and the channel strip choices made in the master output section. Once all of our selections for this job have been finished, we simply hit the add to queue button and each one of those individual buses with all their routing configurations and all those choices and bit depth choices and selections are going to be made for us automatically. Now, all we have to do is hit the Start Queue Export button and go make a cup of coffee while all of these incredibly complex jobs are done for us completely unattended in the background. So there's a quick look at the incredibly flexible and powerful export audio tool in Cubase Pro. So now that we have our audio outside of Cubase and all of its various forms, it's time to start thinking about mastering. Coming up in the next video, we're going to re-import our two-track stereo WAV file back into Cubase and learn about the mastering process. This is the last and final step and the most important step of the audio production process that prepares our material to compete in a commercial world. Until then, be safe, be creative, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.